So boom, right? We got another bad back Larry reaction with a title with how good was Larry Bird actually? All right, so we're going to see how good was Larry Bird. Everyone say he's a legend, he's a this, he's a that. I believe so, but we're going to see with our very own eyes, right? Hopefully not AI edited, but our very own eyes, Larry Bird in his prime and you know what I'm saying? What he got to offer to the game of basketball and so I hope you guys enjoy like comment subscribe join the fam there's a lot more coming i gotta even i even got a larry bird playlist bro check it out all the videos there and yeah let's get it larry bird was one of the best players to ever touch a basketball and together with magic johnson the biggest nba star of the 80s what made him so successful considering he was quite unathletic mm. and how would he fare in today's nba did he win just because his teams were loaded and where does he stand among the best shooters of all time watch the rest of the video to find out I'm going to start by saying this. Basketball is a team sport, bro. Keep that in mind. Because I hate how people try to make it seem like one player wins it all. They carry the whole team. That's not how it works. But yeah, let's get it. A Hick from French Lick. Bird was born into a poor family in French Lick, Indiana, a town of 2,000 inhabitants. Larry grew up a shy, Damn. introverted kid who didn't talk much. That's and a he high did school. most of his talking on the basketball court. He grew up to six foot nine and played it small forward. But with his understanding of basketball, he could play whatever position he wanted. Larry finished his high school career as the best scorer in school's history, and he Damn. could choose where he wanted to go to college. He started playing for Bobby. I, have, I did not know that the best scorer in high school. What? He was like that? Knight at Indiana University, but didn't like the spotlight and being around so many people. He then settled at Indiana State University, where the pressure was much less than with the Hoosiers. Larry averaged 30.3 points, 13.3 rebounds, and 4.6 assists in college. The Ooh. Sycamores were invincible in Bird's senior year and became the number one team in the country with a 33 win streak. Their only loss came in the 1979 NCAA Finals, where they played against Michigan State, led by senior guard Urban Johnson. Despite 19 mm. points from Bird, Magic and his teammates celebrated the title in what was the- So even back then, they was going at it down. Despite 19 points from Bird, Magic and his teammates celebrated the title in what was the most watched college basketball game in history at the time. Bird was named the Collegiate Player of the Year, leaving Indiana State as the fifth ranked NCAA scorer of all time. He was already drafted, as the Boston Celtics selected him in the NBA draft in 1978, hoping that Bird, who qualified for the NBA as a junior, would skip his senior year. He opted to stay in Indiana. And when he finally arrived in Boston, the Celtics looked nothing like their championship selves. With consecutive losing seasons, Bird then single-handedly caused the biggest turnaround ever seen in the NBA at the time. Boston wow, bro, as soon as I say, right, oh, uh, one, one player can carry, you know, the whole team because it's a team sport or whatnot, they go and say that shit. Bro, I gave up. <laughs> then single-handedly caused the biggest turnaround ever seen in the NBA at the time. Boston improved their record from the season before by 32 wins. They finished with 61 wins and 21 losses. Although his arch-rival Magic Johnson had an impressive season and won the title with the Lakers, Bird was named the Rookie of the Year with the average of 21.3 points, 10.4 rebounds, and 4.5 assists. Damn, that's pretty solid for a rookie, though. That's solid. 20 point, bro. For any rookie to average 20 points, bro, hats off to you, bro. Cause that's that's not easy. <laughs> that's not easy. The transition coming in from college basketball to the NBA is complete it's such a big difference in the game. And for you to still go and dominate and have like 20 points average, bro, that's insane. For you to even get the minutes to get the 20 points is insane. He also made the all-star team and first team all NBA and even finished fourth in the MVP voting and proved he could transform a mediocre team into a great one all by himself. A new green dynasty. Mm. After Bird's rookie year, the Celtics had a busy offseason. Legendary Red Auerbach worked his magic and brought two new faces to Boston that would form one of the biggest dynasties in NBA history. Auerbach robbed Golden State by sending them the first and 13th pick in the 1980 draft in exchange for center Robert Parrish and the third pick, which became Kevin McHale. Along with the newly formed Big Three, the Celtics mm. also had an all-star point guard, Nate Tiny Archibald, young and athletic forward Cedric Maxwell, and a few well-integrated role players that made the team complete. The head of the- You see, one thing I don't understand, people complain about super team and this and that, right? 
don't every team try to get better don't don't every team try to get the best pieces for their team so, like so technically speaking right isn't every team a super team it does one team is better than the other if you're trying to have like the best players on your team don't you think every team is a super team i mean i mean just think about it bro like even back then they're trying to get the best players that's a super he even said it himself a super team back then so how lebron started i don't understand man i don't snake was of course he larry bird who was second in mvp voting on route to a league leading 62 and 20 record the celtics mm. avenged the loss to the sixers from the previous year and after a tough seven game series in the eastern finals they were in the nba finals once again there they would be met by the houston rockets led by prime moses malone who was arguably the best center in the league at the time Malone averaged 23 and 16 in the series. But the Celtics were too good of a team and would win the title with four games to two. Bird averaged 15 points, 15 rebounds, and seven assists for the series. But the finals MVP went to Cedric Maxwell, who led the Celtics in scoring with 18 points per game. And when everybody already saw the new green dynasty, two bad years ensued, despite Bird's all around excellence and McHale's improvement. They once again were the number one seed in the East. Bird was the All-Star Game MVP, but Philadelphia retaliated for a close defeat in the Eastern Finals. And this time, they won in seven games. Down. The year after, the Celtics regressed even more, finishing as a third seed and getting swept in the second round by the Milwaukee Bucks. After that, Coach Bill Fitch resigned and was replaced by Casey Jones who won eight titles in the Bill Russell era as a player. Yeah, I resigned. It was like, hey, bro, pack it up. <laughs> they came knocking on his door right after the, after they got swept. Hey, bro, come, hey, pack it up. <laughs> pack it up, bro. Oh, hell no. The change bore fruit. The team was refreshed with the young shooter Danny Ainge and veteran point guard Dennis Johnson and played the best basketball in the NBA, finishing with a 62-20 and 20 record. Mm. After three years of coming in second, Larry Bird finally won the regular season MVP with 24.2 points, 10.1 rebounds, and 6.6 .6 assists on average. Not the bad. Celtics steamrolled to the finals, where a known foe awaited. It was, of course, Magic and the Lakers. The title was decided in Game 7, where Larry Bird led the Celtics to their 15th NBA title. Bird was named the finals MVP, and he finally had his revenge over Magic who defeated him in the NCAA Finals of 1979. The following season, the Celtics were even better in the regular season. Bird repeated as MVP, and McHale repeated as the sixth man of the year. They got to the finals again with the same opponent. After the Celtics Damn. won game one, 148 to 114, in a game that was dubbed the Memorial Day Massacre. Okay, wait, that's a blowout, what the hell? It seemed like the Celtics were going to dominate the Lakers and repeat as champions. However, the Lakers had other plans, and especially Kareem was determined to defeat the Celtics. Kareem averaged 25.7 points, 9 rebounds, and 5.2 assists in 6 games, Not on 60% shooting. And Ooh. the Lakers have finally won the NBA Finals against the Celtics, for the first time in 9 tries. 1986, the greatest Celtics team ever in the pinnacle of Bird's career. After the finals loss, Auerbach made another clever move. He traded Cedric Maxwell to the Clippers for Bill Walton, once one of the most talented centers in the league, who accepted the role of a sixth man on the Celtics. While Kevin McHale moved to the starting lineup, the Celtics won 50 out of 51 home games that year, which is a record that still stands and likely will never be broken. Larry Bird experienced Shit. the absolute peak of his game and basketball brilliance in 85-86. He deservedly won another MVP and became the only player other than Wilt and Bill Russell to win the award in three straight seasons. The 85-86 season birthed several games that proved the endless- I don't think it'll ever be a uh, like a repeat of like an MVP ever again. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think the NBA, the NBA gonna do something to change it. To like to prevent not change it but to like to prevent people from winning it three times in a row because lebron i honestly had that shit like five six times in a row to be honest i'm just saying but you know they ain't gonna they ain't gonna do that bro anything that come close to um, michael jordan like record the nba is not gonna allow it <laughs> unless it's something that you can't stop unless it's like scoring or rebound but when it comes to like accolades like awards and stuff like when it comes down to like voting hell no
is basketball genius of Larry Bird, and most notable is the left-handed game. Before the game against Portland, Bird surprised his teammates and journalists by saying that he would shoot the whole game with his left hand because he wanted to motivate himself tough. for a relatively meaningless regular season game. How much did he score? Just 47 points, 14 mm. rebounds, 11 assists with a game-winning shot, and 22 points scored with his left hand out of a 40-point triple-double, bro, with a left hand. Sheer boredom and fun. And those are the reasons <laughs> why he was called Larry Legend. Apart from Damn. that, he also scored a career-high 60 points on the Atlanta Hawks earlier in the season. Almost everything he put up toward the basket went in, and he got into such a zone that the Hawks bench jumped off their chairs and cheered, after which they received hefty penalties from the Hawks coach, Mike Fratello. Throughout the game, the commentator noted that what he was Damn. watching was the biggest shooting exhibition in basketball history. And at the time, it truly was. The Celtics won 67 games in the regular season and lost just one game in the playoffs on their way to the finals. There, they would be greeted by the Twin Towers of Houston, Ralph Sampson and Hakeem Olajuwon, who defeated the Lakers in the West Finals. But nobody could touch the Celtics that season, who were one of the most talented teams ever Hook. assembled. <laughs> Bird was two rebounds and three assists shy of averaging a triple-double in the Finals, and he deservedly won his second Finals MVP. Final years, injuries, and the dream team. In 1987, the Celtics had a very difficult season. Their number two pick, Len Bias, tragically passed away after the draft, and they suffered many what? injuries during the season Damn, and the playoffs. But Larry Bird was too good, and they still advanced to the finals. After two seven-game series against the Bucks and the Bad Boy Pistons, where Bird made one of the most legendary plays and stole the inbounds pass from Isaiah Thomas that won a crucial Game 5 for the Celtics. And in the finals again, it was the Lakers for the third time in four years. Because LA was much more rested coming to the finals, the Celtics did not have enough gas in the tank to stop the fast-paced showtime. Bird delivered another 24-10-5 for the series, but it wasn't good enough, and Magic got the best of him once again. Next year, Bird had maybe one of the best statistical years of his career. He averaged 30 points on 50, 40, and 90 shooting. The feet it kind of reminds me of like LeBron. He like he just gets better as the year progresses, but his injury and stuff like that's what caught, caught his career short. But imagine if like Larry Bird wasn't like injury prone and whatnot, or he didn't get injured, like his back, everything was like perfectly fine, bro. Right? Like, we might not be talking about Michael Jordan the way we talk about Michael Jordan today. I'm telling you. He achieved the previous year as well, proving that he's the best shooter who ever played at the time. The Celtics reached the conference finals, but it would be their last hurrah as the Pistons finally got over the hump and managed to beat them. In the offseason, Bird sustained a severe back injury from chopping mm. wood back home in Indiana. He was one of the best oh, basketball really? players in the world. So he got injured, not even on the court, but chopping wood? Oh, the world, no. who had millions of dollars, but he was still the hick from French Lick. He chopped his own wood when he needed to, and I respect him even more for that. The back injury and surgery on both Achilles tendons caused him to miss almost the entire 88-89 season. However, even debilitated, Bird was better than most players in the league, and despite needing to stretch for more than two hours to be able to run, he was still very productive. He was named an all-star each of the last three seasons, along with some memorable performances, like a game in the 1991 playoffs where he suffered a concussion, but then pulled a Ooh. Willis Reed and came back to the game, scored 17 points in the second half, and won the series for the Celtics. Unfortunately, Damn. the toll on his body was getting too much to bear, and he ended his career in 1992, when he finally became teammates with his good friend Magic Johnson on the Dream Team. Bird oh, yeah. flew off into the sunset with the gold in Barcelona. Bro, that's what I'm saying. And people was like, oh, the dream team, this this is the dream team, and this team would be our 2024 team. How? They were all old and injured. Larry Bird was on his last leg. <laughs> it's like, come on, bro. There's no way. Oh, that's because MJ's on the team? Like, come on, bro. Retiring is the best small forward and the best shooter to ever play. Legacy. Trash talking God, top 10 player ever. Facts. One of the most famous Larry Bird trash talking Facts. stories is from the 1986 three point shooting contest when the legend walked into the locker room and asked all the other participants who's coming in second after him. Of course, he <laughs> went on and swished near every three pointer and won, all without taking his jacket off. Bird would win the three point shooting competition the next two years as well. And before Reggie Miller came along, there was no argument who's the best shooter ever. On the 26th of December, 1990, 
Indiana's Chuck the Rifleman person said he's going bird hunting before the Celtics game. Bird Ooh. replied that he'd got a Christmas present for him. And while Chuck was on the bench, Bird got the ball in the corner just in front of the Pacers bench. He hit the jump shot, turned to Chuck, and said Mary F and Christmas. And that's who Larry Bird was, <laughs> and how he talked. He was the ultimate competitor, and he had all the skills in the world to back it up. He'd tell players where he would get True. the ball, what he was going to do, and then do it. And there was nothing they could do to stop him. He accused the opposing team of putting a white guy to guard him because he felt that was disrespectful. And if you watch Space Jam, you know that Larry isn't white. He's clear. Bird would drink half the <laughs> bar clear. under the table. Sometimes he'd fight people in the bar as well, and then go to the game the next day and dominate, as if nothing happened. Bird was a unique player, and there was nobody like him. At first glance, his moves look almost clumsy, far from physically dominant or athletic. He rarely dunked, his vertical was average at best, and he never played exceptionally fast. From the neck down, in basketball terms, he was nothing special. From the neck up, until the end of his fingertips, he was pure genius. There's no doubt that he would be a great player in today's era, where we can see players like Doncic and Jokic dominate the game without great physical Damn. talent. Bird was one of the top Damn. 10 players who ever played, and one of the best pure shooters ever. He was the best True. player in the NBA for almost an entire decade, despite the brilliance from Magic and the athleticism of Michael Jordan. And like Magic Johnson said, there will never be another Larry Bird. That's what I'm saying, bro. Larry Bird doesn't get enough credit at all. At all. Not enough credit. And I don't know why people... He, does, he doesn't get brought up as much as our, as any of these other, like, Hall of Famers and whatnot. But anyway, that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments what y'all think. Like, subscribe, join the fam, and I'll see y'all for the next one.